you know, I tell people all the time, it's like, yeah, working with artists is a great way to make income as a producer, but syncing is huge money. I can do a Kmart commercial that's 15 seconds long. You're talking about $15,000 for the fee and then maybe another five or 10 grand on the master. Peace, what's going down? It's DJ Pay One for BeatStars.com. Here in the building with a producer who has a lot of history. I, I feel like I'm going to learn a lot from this interview. Wish was going down. What's up, Payne? Uh, great to be here, man. I appreciate you doing this. Yeah, I appreciate you uh, coming on and, and sharing your experiences, uh, of which you have many. Uh, so let's let's start at the very beginning. When did you start producing? Uh, I started producing, probably really got into it in the late 90s, but didn't really actually start actually getting good at it probably till the early 2000s yeah so I, I started off with a cork triton that's uh I, you know one of my favorite producers with pharrell so i was like oh, whatever he's using that's what i'm using <laughs> so you said something interesting you said you didn't get good at it until later this is yep. a question that that comes up a lot with with producers beat makers how were you able to tell that you weren't good and then how were you able to identify what you needed to change in order to get good and then how did you know that you had improved at that point so yeah so when i first started the reason i knew i wasn't good is it just it just like first of all my mix was horrible you know my kicks and snares would be just out of whack uh, my melodies were real simple um and it's not that i that they might have not been that good it's just i to my you know to my standards of like i said a timberland or a pharrell i was like these are nowhere near where they need to be and that's how i always try to strive to be you know to be really good at something so i felt like i had to be at you know at their level before i was like you know these are decent which i, I didn't get to that level in a couple of years but still so what what advice would you give to a producer who's just not quite sure how they measure up and they and they want to become better listeners uh and they want to become better producers as a result of analyzing music that's already out there for example yeah i'd say i'd say check out the competition you know i'm not saying go bite people i mean that's that kind of i'm not gonna lie when i first started i i sounded like dr dre i sounded like timberland i sounded like neptunes and i think by kind of doing that i actually then then was able to find my own sound within that so um i i, I just i just tell people just be creative don't you know find your favorite producers and kind of see what they're doing that you like and maybe add that to your, your your collection. So with with regards to mixing getting better mixes, what's some advice you can give producers too, especially ones who don't have backgrounds as engineers, haven't gone to to school to become, you know, recording engineers, that kind of thing. How can they start improving their mixes by themselves? Right. Um, I first thing I'm going to say is, you know, mixing is not all about all these crazy effects all the time. Um, I, I, I say start with your volumes and pans. I think that's the most important thing in a mix is what, see where all your levels are. Make sure, like, if you like, like I said, I like drums, so I keep my drums at a, at a certain level. You know, I want those to be above the track, and then I start filling things in with the volumes, and then use your pans so not everything's down the middle. You know, you want to widen out your track so. If you do like a melody, maybe keep that in the center. But maybe if you start adding counter melodies, you know, I kind of pan those out. Maybe I'll do one to the left. And then if I have a hook melody, I'll kind of bring that to the right. Um, and then, yeah, and then and then bring your low end in and make sure that that's hitting with your kick. Um, then you can start getting the EQing. You know, if, if, if your kick and 808 aren't matching, you know, maybe you can start cutting out some of the low end of your kick or, you know, whatever you have to do. Um, and then I, the second thing is re reverb. If your track sounds simple and it's uh, you're like I don't know where to go with this, add some reverb in there. It's gonna fill in the cracks. You know, if you have a main melody that's kind of driving, but you feel like it still feels empty, put put some reverb on it and some delays. You know, uh, and then the more you do it, the better you get. Like I didn't go to school for this, but you know, the more I did it, and you know, and reference, use a reference. Pull one of your favorite tracks out and go back and forth until you, you know, you, it, it sounds similar. Great advice. So you started making beats in the 90s. When did you start licensing beats online? Because you were an early adapter in that world. That's going to be, yeah, early 2000s, probably like 2002, 2003, I started leasing beats. Um, and it's a lot different than it is now. <laughs> um, back then, we didn't cater to the type beat of like, you know, let's say Little Baby or something. It would have been Dr. Dre type beat. You know, Timberland type beat, um, Neptune's type beat. That's that's how we used to cater to artists. Is you you make a type of beat to a producer, and now it's changed. It's to an artist. You know, um, and also we didn't have all the cool things like that. Beat Stars has. We didn't have. You know, if someone bought a beat off me, I had to say, hey, you can either send me a check 
or uh, here's my PayPal information, and then I'll send it to you after I get it. And then I, you know, I'd write out a contract basically. I mean, I'd have a template, and I'd have to write their name in everything. And I'd have to send it to them, and sometimes I even send it in the mail. So it's a lot different. I mean, we have a, we have a lot of better tools nowadays as far as leasing goes. So it's kind of a trade off, but back then there were very few producers. Who were some of the other producers that that started licensing beats around that same time? And uh, one of one of my buddies actually still does it. He's pretty big on even on Beatstars. His name is Rocket Productions. So I'm kind of started around the same time. Um, God, I'm trying to think of who else was out there. First guy I remember was Soul Eternity. He was also from the Midwest. Okay. Another one of my friends. Yeah, yeah. Sh- shout That's out to awesome. him. Well, he's a yeah, he's an entrepreneur. He's always doing something. Every time I talk to him, he's like, "Oh man, I'm teaching this now, and I'm doing this." So yeah, he's a, yeah, he's a good dude. Super talented too. Because I saw him doing it. He was doing it on MP3.com. So that was one of the first platforms that I saw where you could get instant delivery of a, of a digital file. That's where you started too. That's where I started. Yeah. What was your first placement? Uh, my first placement that uh, that was actually pretty big is I got I got contacted by Midway Games. Um, they had heard my tracks from from being online. And I talked to this guy named, uh, I think his name is Johnny Valentino. And he, he worked there and he said, hey, man, you know, I really like your stuff. Um, we're doing something new in, in the video game world. It's called, it's, we got this game, it's called NBA Ballers. And it's not only a basketball game, but it's, but it's a lifestyle. So the more you play and the better you get, you can, up, you know, you can update your life. Like basically you can get mansions and gold chains and new clothes and all this stuff. And he said, but we want to have this underground kind of cool feel. We didn't want to just get tracks already out there. And he's like, I want you to kind of headline this. If you know, I want you to do mo- the majority of the music. And you know, I went and met him. I, and, and what was cool is I was living in Chicago, and he was from, and their office was in Chicago. So we met up. He took me around the facility. You know, looked at the game, and I said, Dude, I'm down. I'm totally gonna do this. And that was my first big check. I think I got, I did 20 beats and five songs, and I think it was like 25 grand. And I was like, Man, for my first kind of placement, I thought, I thought that was pretty awesome. What so, year was this? 2000, I don't know. <laughs> it's got to be early 2000s, I would think. So since then, you've had more experience with licensing to film, to video games, commercials, that sort of thing, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I've, I've been yeah, I've been doing that for a while. I, even now, my uh, I live in Nashville now. My publishers here too. They have an office, so I've been you know I've been doing some pitches with them. And you know, I tell people all the time, it's like yeah, working with artists is a great way to make income as a producer, but syncing is huge money um you know i i I can do a kmart commercial that's 15 seconds long you're talking about fifteen thousand dollars for the fee and then maybe another five or ten grand on the master um you know i did a a movie trailer i got like 20 grand for that and it's just like it's uh, people need to understand like that's that there's a lot of money in sinking and you know I, i tell producers like go after that you know Okay, so what's some advice you can give to a producer beyond go after the sinks? How, what are some ways to, to build a, a relationship with the people, music supervisors and so forth, who, who can actually get you those placements? Uh, I'd say, you know, reach out to publishers. Um, maybe contact them. Say, hey, you know, I'm a, I'm a writer. Um, would you mind checking out my music? And, and it's not going to happen all the time. You know, a lot of publishers like to sign are, you know, of course, writers because they you want to make money off your, that, you know, all the income that you already have coming in. But sometimes if they hear talent, you know, they're going to be like, hey, I, I know I can get placements with this guy or girl. Um, and, I mean, there's some, there's some other things like Song Trader. I've heard people have had some luck on. Um, Taxi, I've heard good and bad. Um, but there, there are, you know, some of these online companies that do that for you. You know, you, you pay a small fee and they will pitch stuff for you. So I'd say start there, you know. And then once if you get a placement, then you're definitely going to, you know, you can talk to a publisher. But... There's a, there's goods and bads of signing with a publisher too as well. So, <laughs> well, what, what are some what are some pros? What are some cons? Uh, a pro with, with signing with a publisher, if you can get a, a good percentage. So basically, they're going to take a percentage of your publishing, um, depending on what kind of deal you do. Um, so it, it, everything's negotiable. If, I mean, if you already have a, a lot of big placements out there, I would say maybe not go with a publisher because you know. But you're going to have to be able to collect that on your own and figure out somebody that can help you with that. Um, but the benefit of signing with a publisher, let's say you don't have any income coming in yet because sometimes we don't get paid in the industry right away. It might be six months, might be eight months. You might have had a, you know, there might be something on the album that wasn't right. And guess what? Everybody has to, you know, wait on their money for that. Um, so I'd, I'd say, you know, if you sign with a publisher, they're going to give you upfront money. And, and, and in return, of course, they're going to collect a percentage off of that, but they will go out there and, be, and do their due diligence to get, make sure they get, get your money for you. So, so, you know, pros and cons. 
Got it, got it. Um, so speaking of big placements, I heard that you produced a beat for the CEO of BeatStars. Yeah, so uh, so basically... That was a million dollar check, right? <laughs> yeah, that should be now. Um, but basically, yeah, two years ago, um, I was I was actually... I used to, I used to uh, run a college out in St. Louis, and I was talking to some of the students. They're like, hey, man, you heard of this, this uh, company called BeatStars are online? They help you sell beats and stuff? I said, no, I never heard of them. I went and checked them out. Um, went on there, and I, I was like, you know what? I'm going to reach out to whoever owns the site because I'm because I want to get back into Leafs and Beats. I was like, I miss it, you know, and it's it's great extra income. Um, and I, I I reached out to Abe. I emailed him. I said, you know, this guy's probably not going to get back to me, but I, I kind of put it in there and said, hey, my name's Wishmaster. I don't know if you know who I am, but I'm one of the originators of you know Leafs and Beats. And I figure since that's what you're doing, you might you know, I, I, I'm thinking about joining with you. And you know, he's like, hey, bro, call me. I was like, all right, cool. So I call him and I, and I go, hey, what's up? Hey, man, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about joining Beat Stars, and, you know, I don't know if you know who I am, whatever. And I said, he's like, dude, do I know who you are? He's like, bro, I used to buy beats off you. And I was like, <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's how I found that out. So that was pretty cool. And then, yeah, ever since then, man, just been a really cool dude. Yeah, what's, what's your experience been? Because you're sticking with them as, as your platform, right? I definitely am, yes. Yeah, Beat Stars, uh, I mean, it's, like I said, back when I used to lease beats, I had to do everything. They do everything for you. They uh, they send the beats off. You don't have to do any, You don't have to do that. They send the contract. They put the name of the person and the amount they paid and everything in the contract. You can tweak the contract. You could put deals. I mean, that's cool. If if you want to do buy one get one free, which that's one of the deals I do. It's like it's really easy. You just put it right in there, and it automatically does everything for you. Um, they promote their own people. I've never heard of that. You know, when I was on SoundClick, I don't remember SoundClick. Hey, say, hey, man. Wish you're at the top of the charts. Let me uh, help you promote. You know, um, I, I, I just feel like they're just well-rounded, and for what you're, you know, for what you're paying, you're getting so much more. You know, I, I was talking to some guys like, man, I, I don't know if I can do twenty dollars a month. I said, they give you so many tools that if you can't sell a beat a month, and you just, I mean, I'm telling you, that's going to pay for itself. You know what I mean? And you just have to figure out what you're doing. So switching gears, yeah, you lived in St. Louis for a long time. Obvious question is, did you work with Nelly? Nelly's a St. Louis legend. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I've done over thirty songs with Nelly. Thirty uh, songs. Yeah, not not placed. I've done thirty songs, with him, but I, yeah, I've, I've done three songs that actually got released. Um, yeah, I used to. Uh, I mean, full time. Just I used to go to his studio. Uh, Nelly always worked at night, so he'd be like, "Hey, you know, this is the, hey pimp, meet me at the studio." <laughs> I'd be like, "All right, what time you want to be there?" He'd like, oh, meet me at eleven. You know what I mean? He'd get there probably twelve one a.m. and he'd work all the way till the afternoon. And uh, I did that probably every day for a couple of years. So, I mean, we just knocked out record after record. So, yeah, super cool dude, though. He's actually going to start working on a record here pretty soon. So I'm going to try to jump on that. So were you uh, creating from scratch with him when you were in the studio with him? Sometimes I would create from scratch. Uh, a lot of times I'd go home and I'd start. So when, when I work with an artist, I kind of like try to sing like him or rap like him while I'm creating the beat. A lot. Some people make fun of me for it because I would say like, "Hey, da 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 da," you know. I'll start doing that while I'm making the beat because I know his type of vibe, and then I, I usually create beats and then just bring them to the studio the next day. And, and what I was known for by his entire camp is, if you call Wish, he's gonna have fifteen or twenty beats ready in a day. And that's I, I'm just very you know I, I love making beats so much that it's just that I just knock through them real quickly. Okay, so there's another iconic rap artist from Missouri that I believe you've worked with. His name is Tech Nine. Uh, he co-owns Strange Music. You've, you've done some work with, with not just him, but with the whole Strange Music camp, right? Yeah, a lot of work with them, yeah. So how did you how did you link up with, with Tech9? So Tech9 came through uh, St. Louis. Uh, he was doing a show, and and, and and I'll be honest with you, I never heard Tech9 before then because I'm, I'm from Chicago and I was a Twister fan, and everybody always told me, oh, Tech9's faster than Twister, and I'm like, no. Sorry, I don't even, I don't even want to hear this stuff. And then, uh, you know, I looked him up. I'm like, this dude has red hair. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm not going to listen to this. You know, I was just being judgmental. And I was already upset because they are like telling me he's better than Twister and everything. And uh, so I got invited uh, through I was the production team I was with. Out, and they were like, hey, we're going to go meet Tech 9 and, and we're going to give him some beats. And I ended up going to this concert and I was just blown away. I was like, this dude is crazy talented. He came out rapping to a machine gun, literally, and hit every single bullet. <laughs> and... And, you know, he came out with the whole, like, pastor outfit and two ladies in bikinis came out, took it off. I, mean, I was just like, I was like, this is a show. You know, I'm used to people on stage. You know, when I was working on they would just hold the mic like this. There's not a lot of action and there's a beat to play. He actually puts on a show. 
And I was so impressed that by the time I met him, I was sitting there, I was like, man, I was almost like starstruck. I was like, damn. I was like, this dude is super talented. I gave him a CD full of beats. And next thing you know, I did uh, five tracks on his um, on his album. Yeah, on, th- on uh, Killer. I'll be damned. Yeah, I think that's kind of the... Well, for me, that was that was my that was my feeling when I first really dove into Tech Nine's catalog. It was I was teaching, and this kid gave me a Tech Nine CD. I'm like, yeah, I've heard of him. Everybody says he's good. <laughs> I mean, how you know you don't know what to think, and then you listen, and and I didn't have the the um, the the, sh- the stage show experience, but just listening, I was. Blown away! I've never heard an artist oh, like that before. Because you know everybody's like, "Oh, yeah, he's a devil worshiper, and he does this." And I'm sitting, there, I'm like, "Oh my god!" You know what I mean? So you get that stuck in your head, and then you actually see him and hear him. It's like this dude's crazy talented. So, and then from there, yeah, I've, I've produced a few more of his albums, and then uh, and I've worked with yeah almost everybody in his camp. Yeah, you just you did some stuff with with Stevie Stone. Which um, were you on the Stevie Stone and JLB Hood album too? Wait, what, uh, what, which one did you say? The, le- the the collaborative album he did because I, I I don't know I'm doing a lot of work with him I'm trying to see if we've been on the same album before I did uh, like two birds one stone I actually I first worked with him when he was signed to um, who was he signed to uh, Re- uh, was it Reckless okay yeah he was so when he was first signed so I, yeah I, I'm actually friends with Steve I actually just talked to him yesterday so yeah are, are you uh, you know trash for his new record I guess yeah he's yeah yeah I, well I the new record the set in stone record I already had the first. The first track with Tech Nine. Um. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I lose track sometimes, and I'm like, man, people bring up like, oh, did you? I was like, man, I, I can't think. That's not, I'm really good. With it. Like, all right, that's the hint. Well, here's a record that you will remember because everybody remembers this because it's so <laughs> it's so out of the blue. Um, I'm on a boat. It's a, this is a platinum. I mean, you already had plaques. Um, Nelly's album went gold. Uh, I, you know, some of those DTP projects you did got certified as well. But I'm on a boat. It's a platinum single. It's a comedy record. Yeah. T Pain's on it, promoted by SNL. How the hell did that happen? All right, so I, I'm, I'm going to tell you the story right now. So basically, um, I was in the studio with Nelly, and this guy, A&R, for, for their uh, record label came. You know, He called up Nelly's studio and said, hey, I'm looking for producers. I need, a, I need some beats. Um, and it's for this dude I'm looking at in East St. Louis. He's a rapper, you know, he's working on this mixtape and we need some beats. So of course they're like, Oh, we got this dude wish, man. He makes like hella beats, you know, he's, he's got you. So dude hit me up. He's like, man, I need beats for this guy's mixtape. So my first reaction, and I I don't know if you feel the same way on mixtape, like really, like you want me to give you beats so you can put on a mixtape, like I'm not going to get paid on this. And so I, I automatically is like, man, you know, I don't want to miss an opportunity, but I also don't want to give this dude the best beats I have because, you know, he's going to put it on a mixtape. And if someone hears it, they're going to, I don't want to use that anymore. Um, so I gave him my, some of my throwaway beats. All right. So if, if nobody knows what throwaway beats, we like producers have these piles of beats that we like love. And then we have these beats are like, dude, what was I thinking? Right. And ironically, so, people love the, the beats that we don't. <laughs> I, and real quick, I'll do a little side thing. You know, I would get in the studio with Nelly and play a beat that's like I spent probably like six hours on. I'm like, this is dedicated to this dude. I know that he can like kill this. And then he'll skip it after five seconds and play a five minute loop that I was working on. I'm like, bro, this is it. Put it in there. It kills me that people will love the stuff you don't. So, anyways, that was one of the beats on there. And I got a call from him. I want to say a few months later, he said, hey, how much do you want for this track? Um, you know. And I think at the time I was like, you know, I, I didn't think anything of it. I was thinking, I don't even know the artist. I'm like, bro, just give me five grand for it. He's like, all right, dude, I got you, man. I was thinking, damn, he was quick about that. Um, Sent me a quick contract, said, hey, you know, it's $5,000. And they said for the Lonely Island. I'm like, I've never even heard of these dudes before. I'm like, all right, this is, this, you know, let's see what happens. <laughs> um, next thing you know, time goes by. Uh, don't even think about it. I, I remember it saying something about a boat on there, you know, and my brother goes, hey, <laughs> didn't you say you, yeah, yeah, something about a boat. And he goes, didn't you say, you know, you did a song called, you know, something about a boat with a lonely honor song. I said, yeah. He's like, dude, it's on SNL right now. And I'm like, what? And he's like, T-Pain's on there. So next thing you know, like my face went bright red. And I go, I, I was like, what the hell is going on? I went on and tried to, I couldn't find it anywhere. And then all of a sudden I found it on Google. And I'm like, what the hell? And, you know, they're on this huge boat. And I'm like, this is legit. You know, this is on SNL, and, like, this is a song, and uh, I immediately called my entertainment lawyer. So they basically released it without us doing the paperwork. You know, they did the initial release where I got my advance, but we didn't do the paperwork. So, we, uh, yeah, we negotiated for a while. 
Um, the Lonely Island, you know, talented guys, they, they, they're, they're, they're comedians, so they don't understand how writing works. And, you know, um, producers, you know, we're, we're writers as well. We make the music. It's 50%, and then 50% goes to the lyrics. They didn't agree with that. They wanted to split it all even. Uh, T Pain's like, dude, just give me 10%, I'm out. You know, so he took 10%, he was fine. So that leaves you with what? 90, right? 50 to Wish, 40 to Lonely Island. They wanted to give uh, the third guy, uh, not on the song, a piece of the publishing. So we had to negotiate for a while. So I ended up getting the, the biggest pot, but we had to do some negotiating and get the, that, that done. But that's, that's how I got that placement, man. Say, say you got, th- you don't have to tell me, say you got 35. 35% of... A, I got to run that, yeah. Okay. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'll be honest. I'm, 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 I'm open, good. I'm, I'm open book, dude. <laughs> 35% of a, of a or 40, whatever it was, of a hit song, I mean, that generates a fair amount of, of revenue on the publishing side, does it not? Yeah, I still I still get paid, yeah. My my publisher pays twice a year, and I, I still get paid off that BMI. I get ASCAP checks. That song still does well. Um, yeah, it's that's that's what I'm saying. Once you once you get a, a record like that, you know, and it it, it, it can have a long life. So, and that's that's why I tell people know what your publishing is, protect your publishing. You know, don't just sign it off. Don't don't the first guy that tells you, hey man, I, I know this person, I, I can get you on Justin Bieber's record. All you gotta do is give me half your publishing. You know, that's 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 what they do, and you and you have to understand that that's you know everybody wants to get your publishing, and that's what that's what producers need to hold on to. Okay, so now we're getting into some education. You like these segues? This is a perfect segue because <laughs> Nelly actually did he did he start an educational institution? Uh, yeah, so so Vatter Rock College teamed up with Nelly and they uh, yeah they opened up a music college out in San Luis. Okay, and you taught there for some time. I I ran it, so yeah, me 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 and the engineer uh, who was Nelly's engineer, we uh, ran the school together. We wrote all the curriculum. Um, yeah, it, and I did that for eight years, and it was a it was a recording, engineering, and production school, and I and I was the one who wrote the uh, the beat courses. So it was a, it was how to make a beat, and then I did advanced beat making, which is amazing. And it, you know, generally speaking, for producers who want a formal education, uh, there there aren't very many options. It's you either go to school to become an engineer, or you just learn on your own. And this was specifically for beat makers producers yeah that, that was that kind of trajectory and it, yeah exactly and you know it's and, and i i learned on my own it's not that you can't learn on your own but this this is the thing about producers that i find they don't if no one holds them accountable they don't do the work and that's that's what it was so i held them accountable i made them i, I said hey man you have to make this type of beat today and you have to have it done by three o'clock you know i'm, I'm holding you accountable if you don't get it done you're not gonna get the grade you know and, and pushing it's like that's that's what i've had to do my entire life it's never Hey, this guy's working on a record. Uh, you got a few months. Take your time, you know. Especially when you're doing a publishing pitch, it's. I get an email and it says, "Hey, you know, Crest is looking for a commercial. Uh, it's 20k. Uh, I need it done by 4 p.m." It's like you know, you ha- you have to learn sometimes to, to work under those conditions. Yeah, I said that recently, and a lot of people disagreed with me. But hey, this man's saying it too. Shout out to Wish. Um, so <laughs> you're continuing to teach, uh, no longer at that same institution, but you have a new partnership with another institution. You have a new plan. Tell me about that. Yeah. So, so while I was there, I was working on. So, it, 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 it was it was a great school, and it, but it was more geared toward the recording side of things. Um, I ended up leaving. Uh, they they, they ended up closing a couple months later after I left. Which you know, sorry about that. Um, and I teamed up with Remington College out in Nashville, and they're a non for profit. And I'm basically doing a. I want to call it like an entrepreneurship production program, the modern day producer. And it's it, I'm teaching, of course, beat making. Um, I'm teaching advanced beat making, just like I was talking about the publishing pitches, like how to go advanced with what you're doing. I'm teaching business. Um, that's the first course you're going to take. It's it's you have to learn business, you know, or else what are you, what are you doing this for? Um, and then I get into how to sell beats. You know, I, I'm teaching techniques. Um, I get into I mean simple things as far as like putting a video together, how to market, um, email marketing. You know, a, a lot of those things that I, I see a lot of producers not doing, you know, customer service. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. I make a lot of money off artists because of you other producers do not have customer service. You don't answer back your emails when somebody said, hey, man, I love your beats. You know, how much for, the, you know, three beats or whatever. And, and I get a lot of people that hit me and say, thank you for the fast response. I've hit up like five people right? trying to work on a project. And it's like, you know, you, you have to you have to have customer service in this in this business. Um, and then after that, I teach vocal production. And the reason I teach vocal production is to be a well-rounded producer is because 
you need to be able to work with an artist. Not that you need to. You can still make money leasing beats, but why not blow up with the next artist? Why why not be able to learn how to record an artist, how to do vocal production? And I don't mean just vocal production doing auto tune. I mean to sit there and work with them in a studio and guide them along, bring the best out of them. You know, a lot of people don't know how to do that. And and, and to be a well-rounded producer, that's how that's how you want to come up. You know what I mean? You want to be the guy that say, "Hey, I I blew up a little baby. I produced his whole record." You know. Um, and then I get into, you know, different things of that nature. I get into songwriting. And the reason I put a songwriting course is there because my whole life I've gotten in the studio and I don't write lyrics. I sit there for four hours playing the same beat over and over again while, while the writers are sitting there writing. It, it is boring beyond belief. So I had to teach myself, hey, what if I turn around my chair and say, hey, let's work on this song together. Let me let me give you some pointers or let, let's listen. And guess what happens when you start writing lyrics on top of your beats? You start getting more publishing. And I remember the first time I did that, I, I did a song in Japan, and I ended up getting like 60% of the song because I wrote some of the lyrics as well. So I, I just think it's important. Now, not, you don't have to write songs, but to be a part of that process, I think, is very important. Let, let's end with this. How do people find your, your online beat catalog? How do people connect with you on social media, learn more about uh, your upcoming uh, institutional partnership, so forth. So uh, it's uh, Wishmaster Beats with a Y, not an I. So it's W Y S H Master Beats dot com. Um, all my social medias are the same. That's another thing, guys. Keep your social medias the same if you can. Uh, I, I see a lot of producers. They have different Twitters, different Instagrams, different you know Facebooks. You you want to kind of keep that together. You know if, if you can, try to. Um, so everything is just Wishmaster Beats. Um, and then as far as uh, Remington, it's just remingtoncollege.edu backslash beats. And uh, my program will be starting here uh, either next month or the month after that. Great. Well, thanks a lot. That was a, a dense interview. This is the kind of interview that, that people need to watch probably more than once and take some notes, learn, come right back. Uh, so I appreciate, I appreciate it. it. Especially coming from you because you understand the whole production game too. So. Well, I learned a lot. I learned a lot from this interview. So thank you once again. Much continued success. Thanks, man. I appreciate it.